Hello everybody and welcome back to Cool's Book Reviews. This time we're checking out A Field Guide to Dinosaurs, The Essential Handbook for Travelers in the Mesozoic by Henry G and illustrated by Louis V. Ray. Much like the books The Wildlife of Star Wars and The World of Kong that we did earlier, this one was another one I enjoyed early on, uh, at least when I was younger. Uh, so I wanted to reread it while I was out on surgery leave and just see how it still holds up. Uh, will I still enjoy it? Will the artwork still be as good? What's outdated and, and what might have been fantasy even back then? Uh, so this one is, like it says, a field guide to dinosaurs, but written more like a field guide like you'd see today with modern animals. And even the use or mention of time travel is seen throughout this book. So if you're not into more of a fantasy aspect in the dinosaurs as far as like these people are going back in time and witnessing them, them in their like natural habitats, jotting down notes, drawing pictures, etc. It's probably not the book for you. Uh, there are some decent facts in here, but then there's a lot of stuff that's more educated guesses or just written like the warning says early on to make it kind of exciting. Uh, so we'll talk about more of that stuff as we get into the book, but yeah, that's kind of the overall narrative of this book, is it's just a field guide to dinosaurs. At some point we've invented time travel, so we can actually kind of see what they're like back in the day. Um, some early things I liked, at least back in the day, and still like today, is just kind of how they show the dinosaurs, more bird-like. Obviously there is some problems, but we'll get to that. But as far as brighter colors, less mammalian, more bird-like, more plumage, that kind of stuff. I really enjoy, and I appreciate it back then, and I still appreciate now, because as we know, that's their closest living relatives. Why are we, you know, representing them like mammals that aren't even closely related, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so yeah, let's get into this. We'll talk about maybe some problems first, and then some things I liked. But first, let's uh, just do a quick overview of the cover and back like we usually do. All right, so here you can see the cover, nice red up top, blue on the bottom. Here you got the author, Henry G., the illustrator, Louis V. Ray. Louis V. Ray is actually one of my favorite paleo artists. I have a couple of his prints autographed down in my room, so at some point I'll have to show you those. Across the cover you got some dinosaurs, um, and they go from like drawings to a fossil drawings of them just across. And we got some well-known ones and then perhaps some lesser well-known ones that we can get into if you guys want. I'm just going to try to kind of keep this brief. Above we see a field guide to dinosaurs in nice bold font. The essential handy book for travelers in the Mesozoic. Like I said, it's supposed to be like if you're time traveling back in time what you could expect. And then you got a nice little Allosaurus skeleton kind of hidden behind the lettering. Across the side, you see the author and illustrator's last names, and then again, a field guide to dinosaurs. And then you see the Baron's logo, as well as the ISBN on the side. Heading to the back, like with most books, it just gives you a brief overview of what you'll expect to find within it. And again, you see that red turning into blue about halfway. Uh, right here, we see a feathered dinosaur drawing, which is pretty neat. Again, this was earlier written than most that appreciated the idea of feathered dinosaurs or at least portrayed them that way we do have other books and we can get to those that are older obviously during the dinosaur revolution and stuff like that uh, when paleontologists were really connecting especially after the discovery of Deinonychus uh, but at the bottom we got the ISBN again so if you guys want to get a quick look at that one and then we'll uh, get into the book itself Here's the back inside cover. Again, just some awesome artwork here. Just showing late Cretaceous and the front inside cover is the same. The biggest one that sticks out obviously are these two Cetacosauruses, pretty intriguing. But let's uh, get into some of the issues I had with this book, or at least some things that maybe are outdated by the time of this video. So one of the most noticeable things that kind of show when this was written was showing Brachiosaurus in Africa. Now at one point this was correct. Uh, there was skeletons believed to be a Brachiosaurus both in North America and Africa. For some reason this one only shows Africa. 
but now today this would actually be referred to giraffe at titan and this is a very famous mount i know you guys have probably seen if you search brachiosaurus you're probably actually seeing giraffe at titan another thing depending on which side of the fence of this argument you sit on is as you can see it just shows some different tyrannosaurs obviously t-rex Right here you got Despletosaurus, Eleoramus is number three, and number five is Eotyrannus. Well, right here is what's called Nanotyrannus. Now, today this is, at least by most, believed to just be a juvenile Tyrannosaurus rex. I know there's some people that are still saying it's its own genre, its own species. Uh, but yeah, today it's still just a juvenile Tyrannosaurus to most. Right here we got some pretty nice artwork, obviously of a very famous fossil mount where we found a protoceratops and a velociraptor actually locked in a death duel. Uh, so this is obviously what it's based off of. Uh, but by the times, at least today, we should see a lot more feathering on this velociraptor. It's obviously very sparse. It should have full wings and right here it just has kind of little proto feathers. So definitely another kind of sign of the times. Something that obviously they didn't know at the time because at the time of this writing we only had the arms of Dinochirus. So they based off of a close relative. Obviously it's related to like just Gallimimus. So they just kind of beefed it up and made it look like a bigger one. But new fossil evidence actually shines light that it's even more strange than what this book portrays. Uh, right here it's almost very Therizinosaur like. But in reality it actually had like a hump. It had a more like stork bill like mouth it was quite intriguing and at some point i'd love to do a video on it for you guys another one is pretty recent as far as these guys here go is they found they're probably just hatchlings obviously in the book they're portrayed as hatchlings and they're all female so there's no males in the species uh, but with newer science and stuff we see that while the babies obviously that we have were hatchlings they're probably either Megaraptids or Cacarodonosaurids. So only time will tell. We got to find some more fossil evidence of larger animals in the area, but they're not their own distinct species anymore. They're just juveniles of another one. Here's a wonderful piece of artwork of Sucumimus. Obviously, some great artwork throughout the entire book, and we'll get into that in prose because definitely a huge pro. Uh, but in this book, it's actually, let's see, where does it say that? Right here, it's a larger, more aquatic African version of Baryonyx, uh, which is really intriguing because, again, recent studies within the last month or so have shown Baryonyx is actually more aquatic than Sucumimus. Maybe not as aquatic as Spinosaurus, but even more aquatic than Baryonyx. So just a little flip-flopping going on there. On to pros, and I'll just kind of just flip through because there's so many good just pieces of art just throughout this book. Like, look at this Cacardonosaurus scene. Just amazing. Uh, just throughout, we get lots of great artwork, be it just black and white or actually full-colored pieces. There's Mementiosaurus. So just throughout, wonderful artwork by Louis V. Ray. And some of these, like the Giganosaurus that we'll get to later, he's actually updated. And so you can go to his website, I'll link it to the bottom, and you can see more updated versions of some of these older drawings. All right, let's get to pros outside of artwork. So we'll just talk about, I guess, some of my favorite ones throughout here and where to start rather than Spinosaurus. Obviously, it's my favorite dinosaur. You can see, obviously, it's listed quite a bit larger than it is known, at least with the evidence we have today. But given when it was written, obviously, yes, it's outdated with its legs, its tail, which we didn't have at the time, but it's still shown living semi-aquatically, hunting, you know, animals that live in the sea, and given more of a pelican-esque appearance. So living well differently than what it was normally portrayed at the time. I mean, look at Monsters Resurrected. It's portrayed quite differently than that show. And so, yeah, another great piece of work and just some great evidence of Spinosaurus and uh, I can't say enough about it, just I love Spinosaurus, my favorite dinosaur. Another cool thing is the design of the Therizinosaurus, this black and white striping. Again, there are some models by DK that kind of look this way, uh, but it's just so iconic of a coloration. Again, it should have more feathers, but at least it's pot belly and looks 
more like a Therizina source than even some modern reconstructions. This drawing of a Tyrannosaurus, again, another fantastic piece of art. I think I'm just going to say that a lot. Lots of great artwork, and Tyrannosaurus is no different. I mean, you got this really massive, bulky-looking Tyrannosaur that, at least in the book, is portrayed just as large as Giganotosaurus, which is rare, again, for even today's time. Speaking of Giganotosaurus, here's the artwork I was saying. Uh, this one I do have as a print in my room, signed by Louis V. Ray, so I'm pretty happy about that. But this is, again, another one of those that have been updated. Because uh, here's another outdated thing is a lot of times you see Giganosaurus and Argentinosaurus portrayed at the same time. But they actually did not live at the same time. So in the updated artwork, it's actually Maposaurus instead of Giganotosaurus. But I just wanted to showcase the Giganotosaurus. And again, like I said, it's portrayed just as large as T-Rex. So neither is given the uh, weight, even though it does say Tyrannosaurus is a little bit heavier. We'll do a couple more. I've already mentioned the Sukumimus a little bit and the problems I had with it. Uh, but as far as artwork, the Sukumimus is fantastic. And again, here's the Cacardonosaurus. Again, fantastic. Just some great pencil sketches. And man, it makes me want to sit down and draw these guys. I really should get back into that. Interestingly, it is shown slightly smaller than both Tyrannosaurus and Giganotosaurus. So again, ahead of the times. So now we're going to talk about some of the intriguing theories that didn't, I guess, are just speculation, we'll say. Uh, first up, we'll talk about this Acrocanthosaurus, which, as usual, great artwork, nothing, no problems there. We see it here, just scavenging. Now, that's one thing this book says is, unlike a lot of people of the time where Tyrannosaurus, or a very vocal minority said Tyrannosaurus was a scavenger, this book picks on Acrocanthosaurus as a pure scavenger, which as a 40-foot-long carnivore, I don't think it was a pure scavenger. But, you know, just speculation. For me, it's probably a mix of both hunter and scavenger, like any modern animal. You know, they're not going to pass up on a free meal. But something that size, I just, I just have a hard time of believing was pure scavenger. Some other interesting speculation here is some Zuni Ceratops scavenging a theropod carcass. Uh, this is something you don't usually see in Paleoar is, you know, perceived herbivores scavenging or complementing their diet with some meat, some protein. Uh, we see this in modern animals with deer, cows, they'll often eat birds. There's lots of videos of that. If you don't want to be gruesome, see some gruesome stuff, don't go look at that. Uh, but yeah, it is. It happens in today's world. To, so to see some speculation of that, you know, I'm not against. So on to Allosaurus, and not to focus on the drawing because the drawing is great, uh, but it super reminds me of the one in the American Museum of Natural History, at least the pose of the rather large specimen of Allosaurus attacking the Barosaurus that's protecting its young. Uh, but we're going to come down here where it talks about Allosaurus maximus, which is Saurophaganax. Uh, this one says it's very large, up to 52 feet, so in length. This book says it's longer than both Tyrannosaurus or Giganosaurus, obviously much lighter built. But it says it is rarely seen by virtue of its ex exclusively nocturnal habit. So they're saying that Saurophaganax, this giant predator, this 52 foot long predator, jet black midnight plumage, uh, was nocturnal. Which is interesting, obviously we don't really have any... Evidence pro or against that, but some interesting speculation. So that's just a brief overview of the book. Obviously, if you guys want, I could go in more detail about every animal in there. Maybe outdated stuff, more about what's pure speculation, and stuff that was maybe ahead of the times. But overall, I do enjoy it still. It holds up relatively well, even though it does have some issues. I'd probably rate it today at 7 out of 10. I know Louis V. Ray has been included in some other more updated books, so at some point we'll have to read that and show you guys some more of his updated work. But yeah, I still recommend it. It's still pretty fascinating. Again, lots of great artwork. Make sure to go check out his links in the description below. If you want to see more about what we're doing here at Cool's Paranormal, though, click that link to your right. If you want to see more Cool's book reviews, click that link to your left. And don't forget to hit that like and give us a subscribe 
and let us know if you've read this book, what was your favorite piece of paleo art?